I've used this quote before. It's uh, one of those quotes that I read years ago, and I think it's probably going to be one of those ones that's going to stick with me for a lifetime. Um, it's about uh, Seneca the Younger describing the difference between the worldview of the Romans and the worldview of the Etruscans, their immediate neighbors to the north. I quote, Whereas we believe lightning to be released as a result of the collision of clouds, they believe that the clouds collide so as to release lightning. <laughs> um, interesting <clears throat> reversal or mirror views of the causal chain. Is the causal chain reactive or is it active? A lot of us believe that Darwin uh, posited a fundamentally reactive view of reality, of at least our origins as human beings, that we were simply reacting to, or that everything that we ever do really is just a reaction to something else, that all change comes about as a reaction to something that's happening to us externally. Um, the Romans apparently <laughs> would have agreed with that, that lightning is simply a reaction to the collision of clouds. That's primitive science for you, but uh, I think that we understand the gist of what Seneca is saying. Whereas the Etruscans believe that the causal chain is proactive. Now in both cases you end up in infinite regression, or at least something where you go off the map. In the reactive model you go back far enough and you go to the big bang and, you know, Okay, what caused that reaction, etc., etc., and it just goes nowhere. In the other way, in the active uh, view of the ca uh, the causal chain, um, what caused the first action? <laughs> what will cause the last one? Where are we going? Um, we're re we're active. We're expanding, looking for something. We are. We have a will. Now, the interesting thing about the will is, is that it was dealt with exhaustively by the two uh, Germans, Schopenhauer and Nietzsche, and it's interesting in that uh, both of them seem to believe in a will, or posit the view that a will would explain a lot of things, or whatever. Um, whereas Schopenhauer's will is reactive, um, Nietzsche's is active. Now this is interesting because this is a response sort of to Suicide for Celluloid's series of aphorisms, or haiku, where he um, goes at, in Mendham's philosophy, or um, at least examines in Mendham's philosophy through the prism of his own point of view. And I would look at it that way as well. I would look at uh, aphorism or haiku or poetry or elliptical language, uh, parabolic language, i.e. parables, as the best way in many ways to deal with concepts such as these. For example, an active causal chain is not the easiest thing for most of us to wrap our heads around. Um, I think that as you get older, I think that idea becomes more and more difficult to sustain simply because so much of your existence is as a function of your past. Whereas a newborn infant would have a much more active view of the causal change, be, causal chain, because there is no sort of past as such. Everything is in the future. Everything is something you move out into. Everything is active. Even if it's simple observation, it's an active observation. You are taking things into yourself. Uh, you're not reacting to other things. Um, but the interesting thing is, again, Schopenhauer's will is reactive, and I would say that in Mendham's view, I don't know what in Mendham's view on the will are, um, but his concept of addiction seems to um, assume that there is a will, and that the, ad the addiction is um, our motivations for doing anything, simple addiction. We are reacting to a need that is in us that is really a go-nowhere need, 
uh, the unneeded need. That is a will as well, because if you need something, you will it, you desire it, you must have it, you need it. Um, whereas I suppose a Nietzschean take on that need is saying, no, it's not a need at all. It's a want. Um, I don't need that lightning to strike, but I want it to strike, so I'm going to have the clouds uh, collide. Um, it's just, where do you put the emphasis on that which you do? Where do you put the emphasis when you're talking about desire, will, that kind of thing? Where is the initiative coming from? Are we simply reacting to that which takes place? Or are we an active participant in the chain of being, I guess, or the causal chain or whatever? Um, I don't really see how this is a soluble issue. Which is exactly why I um, really like the fact that Suicide for Celluloid has approached the issues the way that he has. I would assume that it's the same for the same reason that many people write aphoristically. Um, I took Seneca as an aphorism, even though I, it, it actually isn't an aphorism, but it can be used as such. Um, it's just, where is the emphasis? Are we being pulled along by desire? Or is our desire that which actually causes things to happen? <laughs> um, as I say, I'm not entirely sure what I make of that, uh, but I can't rule out either one. There does seem to be an awful lot of reaction in my life. I have to react to all kinds of stuff. I have to react to the fact that my car is now snowed in and I have to shovel all that out of there. But when you get down to it, my reaction is contingent upon my desire to drive my car. Um, I might be forced to clear off the snow if I want to drive my car. But the snow and my desire to drive my car are not the same thing. Um, there's only a reaction if I want there to be one. Uh, the very fact that my car is now covered in snow does not make my reaction, i.e. clearing the snow off, inevitable. What makes it inevitable is my desire to drive my car. I think in this sort of thing, this sort of issue, the only thing we can really do is take sides, although I attempt to go at this in terms of integration. Is there any way that we can say that the will is both active and reactive? I think that there probably is. It'd be awfully hard to actually describe other than aphoristically or poetically or parabolically, I suppose. Um, but most of the Deep stuff generally is.